Hello everybody, welcome back. So I got married back in July now and I'm so sorry that it's taken me so long to do this video. If I'm being completely honest with you guys, everything was sort of all over the place in different boxes and we just like packaged it all away. I just needed a minute to kind of like get over the craziness of the wedding, organise everything, sort my life out. I've got most, I think I've got all of our DIY wedding stuff here. I hope I don't forget anything. Myself and James got married in July and we wanted to do, well I say we, I wanted to do a lot of wedding DIY stuff because one I've always been a bit of a bargain hunter and I love like finding a good deal on stuff two our venue and the catering were very expensive and actually with that we we ended up going over our wedding budget that we did have I did a main channel video about kind of like how the budget was split up and stuff and any more questions about the wedding so if you want to see that that is over on my main channel which is so does life <laughs> had to think about that for a second but these are the specific diy things that we did and oh also three i love creative stuff and i really liked the idea of doing some bits myself and i get great satisfaction out of doing things myself like i've always been into you know doing my makeup myself doing my nails myself i mean i've tried to do my hair myself and failed miserably at times but other times have been successful i've always been like yeah i can do that myself some of this stuff i regret doing myself i do think I think that life would have been a lot easier if we'd have paid somebody to do the decorations. However, when we were researching about decorations, I had a little look at stuff and for some decorations it can literally cost thousands of pounds to get everything done. I reckon all in all our decorations maybe cost under 500 altogether. I think, hang on, I wrote it in this. This wedding notes book was from James's mum and this wedding planner was from Ellie and I think I wrote a little rough estimate in here okay i didn't actually write down the exact amount but i guess i'll start with the main table decorations hang on let me just put this away so it doesn't get broken so our fake flowers were from a combination of the range and amazon most of them were from the range i think but we got them back in like i don't know march february they might not have the exact same stuff now but they had a lot of choice look on the website and preferably look in store by the way none of this stuff was gifted we paid for it all uh these are what we actually brought with us oh my god yeah okay it was slightly stressful because we had to pile up the cars when i say the cars my parents took most of the stuff and then i had some stuff in, in my car and i think uh m one of my bridesmaids had some stuff in the back of her car so oh my god i've literally not got any of this out since the wedding day oh jesus what is this these were just some random dry flowers that i guess ended up oh my god yeah these were like the spares i remember these are some bits that i didn't even end up using but we got a few of these kind of flower arrangements we tried to get the ones that were matching and we had two that hung either side of um it's called the spinny at our venue just this outdoor area that was called the spinny and it's like a wooden kind of archway we knew that there were two hooks on either side by the way as well the downside of not getting somebody else to do it for you is we did not practice this until the day we probably could have arranged with the venue to go and have a trial run but we didn't do that we just kind of winged it on the day and I just said to my mum, I was like, yeah, I'm just happy with whatever. Just like wherever there's hooks, hang some flowers up. I know that for a lot of people, flowers and florals and decorations is like a huge part of their wedding day. For us, because the venue was so beautiful anyway, we were like, we don't really need that many decorations. And also, most of the flowers are just going to be like in the background out of focus in a photo. And so I didn't want to spend thousands of pounds on real flowers when they're just going to die. So we had a couple of these that were hung either side. They've just got, I don't even know what types of flowers these are, but they look pretty good, especially from a distance. Oh, the ribbon that we wrapped the bouquets in, uh, bouquets, bouquets, I never know how to say it. This was also from the range and then I did end up getting a different thickness on Amazon. So then we also had these, which were like, I guess, what's this called? Like a garland, which matched those. And we put, I think, one or two of these maybe on the archway or three. The previous kind of like bunches that I showed you, I think were around like six or seven pounds. These flower garlands, I think were around the 10 pound mark each. So I think we got three of these ones. I mean, they've been a bit squished in the box. Oh no, it's probably just because that slid along like that. Up close, they maybe look a bit like plasticky. But for the archway, we were like, that'll be absolutely perfect perfect so i think we had maybe like three of those these were some of my faves oh my god they're all still attached together i think james's best man uh got on one of our friend's shoulders to put these up but oh my god i can't even show you they're all they were like wrapped together with wire but we got these flower garlands also from the range which are like fake wisteria i think these were seven pounds each like 6.99 or 7.99 they were also really affordable but in the pictures they look so good this is what they look like up close 
close. So as you can see, like they look a tiny bit plasticky up close, but oh my God, they looked so good in the pictures. So I think here we've got a bundle of like three of these together. Hang on, let me see if I can get one out because I want to show you how long they are. Oh my God, yeah, massive, massive thank you to our friends and family that helped set stuff up on the day. Um, and the venue also helped as well to put the stuff on the tables. Okay, so here is one. Oh, they've like tied them all together. Well done, guys. Um, so if I just discard, I mean, the, this is attached together, but if you just discard this bit hanging out the bottom, they're actually quite long. Yeah, is that one piece? Yeah, that is one, one of them where you like, look how long that is. They're really good and they come in packs. Uh, they were in like plastic bags laid flat on the bottom of all the floral arrangements. So those were the main flowers. And then what's in this one? You can see that I drew a little diagram, right? Literally like the night before the wedding, I was, I was packing all this stuff together, which I don't recommend leaving it until the night before the wedding. I started drawing a little diagram, but I've obviously forgot to finish it. So then on the morning of the wedding, my mum was like directing people for how to put it up. And she was like, I don't know how Soph wants it. And I said to her afterwards, I was like, mum, you should have just come and asked me. But she just improvised and I think it looked great. So, <laughs> oh my God, I've got the prices here. Florist tape, £1.49. Dried floral bouquet natural. Oh, that's like what I put in my... Bride's bridal bouquet, $3.99. White natural garland, $9.99. Okay, so I think that was these. Supreme something rose BQ. Oh, I got some little rose bouquets for my bridesmaids, which I will put in some pictures of. They were $5.99. And then I just jazzed them up, which I'll go into in a minute, but there we go. This is literally just some more of the like garlands all wrapped up and packaged away. So I guess I won't get all of them out, but this is the other one that we had hanging on the other side of the spinny. And then yeah, these are just the same garlands that I've already showed you. I think we put some of them inside, like during the dinner on the top table. So they were great, highly recommend. I do have little bits of plastic all over me now, but hey. So those were the floral decorations for the outside. And then for inside, I've just got them in a bag here. By the way, if any of those are still available, I'll try and link them. These flowers were the bargain of the century, right? We got these from Amazon and these were for our table decorations. As you can see, they have been uh, kind of arranged into a little circle because we put them on the center of the tables. How many tables did we have in the end? I think we had 12 and then the top table. So these are some little like rose garlands. Imagine this, but twice the length because that's how they came. And I cut them in half because I was like, we don't need like one whole one for every table. But these came on Amazon. I think it was like 15 pounds and you got like a few packs of them. These came in a pack of three. For a pack of three, these were 17 99 So if you think about it, like before I've cut it in half, it is like this long, but we decided we didn't need one for every table. Cut every single piece in half like this. And then we just put these round some little candle vases on the tables. And so because it was three in every pack and I then cut them in half, that was six per pack if you halve them. And so it was 17.99 times two for all of the flowers for our centerpieces of the tables. And I will put in a picture of how those looked as well. I mean, they looked fine. It didn't look like anything extravagant, but like I said, we didn't really want anything extravagant and they really like just did the job. There is a fair bit of like glue gun stuff that's coming off them, but did I have time to take that off? No because I didn't realize that that was on there until the night before. And I was like, I do not have time to be picking off glue. And I now just, I mean, we might keep a couple and use them for like stuff around the house, but these were some of the more realistic ones that I'd seen, like in terms of the actual roses, because some of the ones in other shops looked absolutely awful and were like really plasticky. I mean, these ones, you can still tell that they're fake, but they looked really nice on the tables. Ah, I have left the vases. I've just realized that I don't have the physical vases to show you. They're at James's parents' house. However, the other things that we put on the tables, I will put in a picture. We ended up getting 12 lots of the range vase, like trio. I think they were called like hurricane vases. So there was three per table. In the end, I feel like the vases were maybe the main, the one thing that I regret about the table decorations because the first time we ordered them, they arrived like completely smashed and then had to order them again. And then by that point, I mean, the range did give a refund, which was fine. Um, and then seven replacements, but it was just like a bit of a ball lake and they were hard, they were like heavy to transport. We were stressed about smashing them and it was just a little bit more fiddly to set up because there were three vases per table. I feel like it would have been absolutely fine really to just have one vase in the middle of the table and like make up some little bouquets maybe that might've been a little bit cheaper. It would have been a bit more time consuming making up some florals, but honestly, what I would do if we did it all again, I would probably just do this. Buy bunches of Gypsophila 
for like two pound a bunch in Asta and which is what this is and this is from my actual wedding day it's now just dried out and put it in a vase in the middle of the table and then put a table number like I'm so I'm just I don't know I mean it looks nice but it was just all a little bit fiddly I think Gypsophila look beautiful um but anyway so what we did is we got the different size vases from the range and then the candles the candles we got from Ikea and I have a whole entire heavy box of them here we got three different sizes right and we did measure them I don't know how we got this wrong we measured them according to uh the height of the vases and with our particular venue you're not allowed to have any exposed flames you can't have the flame coming out the top of the vase right and so we thought that we'd nailed it with these candles they all arrived in the biggest box known to man like it was ridiculous they were all individually wrapped so we got little small ones we got medium ones and then the big ones, we realised when they arrived that they were too tall and they were actually the same level as the glass and so the flame was going to come out the top. These were like a pound or one pound fifty each or something. And so what we ended up doing, I said to James, I was like, let's just send them back and get some others. But I think by this point, we were so over searching for candles and like we didn't want them to then be like a different colour. I mean, it wouldn't have really mattered. So what I ended up doing one evening is I, this sounds ridiculous. I mean, to be fair, I only had to do 12 because we had 12 tables. I melted down the bottoms of these candles in a pan. At first, I tried getting a hot knife and chopping the bottom off but that was just incredibly messy i got a metal tray that you would use for like a pie i put it in the frying pan and then i heated up the candles and i spun it like this until they melted down a few centimeters and i spent maybe like i don't know three hours <laughs> just melting down the candles so they were the right height was that the right thing to do probably not why did i do that i don't know it was a bit of a waste of time but, but hey it worked the candles were then the right size but now we've just got a shit ton of candles that are like half i mean they're not even half burnt look they've only they were only burnt this much that much on the wedding day and i guess some of them we will keep and like use on display and stuff the others i'll probably just give away or maybe sell them on so yeah those were the candles and those were the table decorations and then on the day we just brought everything in boxes with like the flowers and stuff i'd taken pictures Pictures of how I wanted them to look and sent it to my family and then and the venue I think and then they just helped like quickly set it all up on the day and I don't think it took too long to be fair got these on Amazon for maybe like I don't know less than 10 pounds a bunch of table numbers because again we looked at getting them off of Etsy or something and having like these really cool like wooden ones everything was just so expensive so we were like you know what table number what are we ever going to do with that again we just got these ones on amazon and they can be recycled they're just card they stand up on their own and we just plonked one of those on the table and it looked fine but something that i realized um with all the wedding planning is like okay I, I fully fully understand like i've seen some gorgeous weddings and like where the decorations look stunning and they look amazing and i would literally be like wow like walking into that kind of wedding but at the end of the day like most of the guests that are going to be there they're not there to see your decorations like they're there to have a good time and see you guys get married and like they don't really care as long as they've got the drinks flowing and we've got some nice food if their bellies are full they're having a boogie they're seeing you guys get married they've got other people to chat to like th those are the main things that matter so like the rest of it wasn't super important so i realized one of our family members who was helping us pack away the wedding stuff has accidentally picked up these two vases these are not ours. These, I think, belong to the venue. So, River Valbon, if you're watching this, I'm going to be sending you an email because we've accidentally stolen two of your vases. And I'm so sorry. Are uh, the... I don't even know what his official title is. Basically, the guy that was making sure the wedding ran smoothly just from the venue. He was incredible. Because we had loads of spare gypsophila left over that I'd bought, like, a few days before the wedding. And we bought that to put in our hair and also for, like, the chair decorations. The spare bunches, he just put in some little vases and put them out on the tables which look really nice also in here there is a pair of socks oh my god and a bug apparently nice a dead bug a pair of socks and somebody's sunglasses which nobody ever claimed um so if you're one of my friends and family watching this if anybody lost a pair of sunglasses i mean they have no like brand on them i don't i can't even tell you what type of sunglasses these are if anyone's missing these let me know because i did ask my friends and nobody claims them so i can't remember like i have no idea who these belong to and then something that I nearly forgot to mention, for the outside, uh, I've seen pictures on Pinterest of having like chair covers and also when me and James went to visit the venue there was another couple getting married on that day and they had these like chair sort of drape things. Again we just got them on Amazon, we got 20 I believe because we had 10 rows of chairs and so we had like one 
set of them on each side just kind of framing the aisle because we thought if we do every single chair it's going to take like our family so long to set it all up but again the chair cover drape things i will link down below they were just from amazon my mum did iron them all because they came quite screwed up and they're all actually at her house these were 20 quid and so we got two lots which was like 40 pounds and they looked really nice like i said a few days before the wedding bought a few bunches of gypsophila from asda which i guess is a bit of a risk if the supermarkets don't have them and if the supermarkets weren't gonna have them we were just gonna like chop i don't know we were gonna improvise with something <laughs> maybe just have literally the chair drapes but we just bought loads of bunches of gypsophila so cheap and there was more than enough and then on the day they just snipped off some little like clusters of it and just tied it with a bow and put the little bits of gypsophila on it is it gypsophila or gypsophilia and it looked so nice and then after the wedding literally just took this oh oops that bit's a bit broken in it uh took the water away le left them to dry and now we have some dried gypsophila from our wedding day which is just on display which i think is really cute and it's probably not gonna last forever like it is a bit brittle you have to be careful with it but i mean it's been good since july and honestly just seeing that dried gypsophila it's exactly the same as the buttonholes like the little flower clusters that like get pinned onto the suits james ordered those off, off of etsy for like i don't know 40 quid seeing this dried gypsophila it's literally just that like a two pound bunch could make you more than he ordered it was like a two pound bunch of flowers that they've let dry out snipped a cluster off wrapped a bit of string round and put a pin in it and they were charging on etsy like 40 quid for them and we could have made them for like four pounds with the string and the pins probably but hey it is what it is if that's what you want to do or even get some fresh and just pin it into the suit it will look gorge and then the next thing is this is my bridal bouquet i think it looks pretty cute this was a bunch of flowers from the range artificial flowers which i think was like 15 pounds maybe maybe 17 tops and then i've seen some pictures of like dried floral arrangements online so it didn't originally have these like dried bits and the little bunny tails is that what they're called and then these little things and the like fluffy bits and like the blue bits it didn't have all of these on it and it wasn't wrapped like this it was in like another thing but me and my mum spent a day uh with the bridesmaids bouquets and then we also added in some of these like what is this stuff called pampas grass maybe um i kind of like held it and we put all the flowers into it threaded them all in and then as i was holding it we wrapped it all with tape and then wrapped the ribbon around it this was my bridal bouquet which i think looks lovely and it looks so fine in the pictures like yes if you look at it up close some of the flowers you can tell they're not real but honestly like adding these little dried bits just elevated it so much and i was so happy with that i think it looks so nice and now i've just got this on display in a little vase oh my god another thing that we did that saved us quite a lot of money and also for our particular venue they only allowed fresh confetti which when they told us that we were like that's gonna be so much more expensive than getting dried confetti and also i didn't understand why because surely dried confetti is easier to sweep up and i really wanted when we booked to get married i didn't realize that this was part of like the deal um that they didn't allow paper confetti i really wanted the biodegradable paper confetti because one it's super cheap and two it flutters so beautifully and you can get the most gorgeous photos and all the wedding tips that i'd seen is like people being like get paper confetti so i was so ready to do that I spoke to the venue and they were like no only fresh petals not even dried petals fresh petals one are more expensive generally if you buy them as like confetti two they're heavy they've still got the water in them they just like flop to the floor so what we ended up doing and again this was a bit of a risk a few days before the wedding went to the supermarket i think all of them ended up being from asda got some of their white roses i think they were four pound a bunch and i think we got around 10 bunches maybe slightly less either way it was not more than 50 pounds and I, my plan was that friday to just like go around every supermarket trying to get whatever flowers i could to be honest and yeah it worked out in the end so we just got the white roses and then i experimented with taking off all the petals but the petals were quite big like this if you throw that in the air it literally just plummets to the floor and you're not going to get a good confetti photo also you're going to need a hell of a lot of roses to actually get enough for people to throw and so i just started ripping them up as an experiment i ripped up one full flower and then was like throwing it and was like yeah that works a lot better that flutters a lot better and so then 
the day before the wedding, I think, my brother and his fiance were down and my parents at their house. They were ripping up petals and putting them in Tupperware boxes. I did it maybe like two days before the wedding or the day before the wedding, then ripped up all the petals, put them in a Tupperware box and put it in the fridge. And that worked absolutely fine. Literally would just like take the leaves and like rip them into like small pieces, as small as you want really. And it doesn't matter that they're different shaped because when you throw it, it didn't notice on camera. They looked amazing actually on camera and we had so much confetti. Okay, sorry, there's still a few seeds kicking about in places because it did make quite a mess, but I just wanted to document this because when making my own confetti, I could not find anywhere how many flowers or roses we would need for the amount of people. So this was 13 roses. There is 14 buds here, but one of them was already missing. I got this bunch of roses in Asda for four pounds and there was 13 like big roses on it. I've just broken up all the petals and ripped up all the petals so they're in smaller pieces so that they float a bit nicer. And this Tupperware is 2.2 liters and it's pretty much almost filled this to the top i reckon there's enough confetti in there for like i don't know 20 people so if you've got 100 people you'd need like five lots of these which definitely works out a lot cheaper these roses were from asda but quite often when i'm in there i see like smaller bunches of roses this one actually had a lot on it for four pounds i was very impressed but my mum's got the rest of them because i was only able to get one bunch and then she went today and got more but um yeah it's literally the day before the wedding I've just ripped up all these pestles and that's going to be our confetti. Oh my god, I'm going to stop playing with it because I just dropped some on the floor. My mum, oh my god, there's some of the like dried bits that I guess didn't get used in the bottom of the basket, look! Some little dried bits of confetti. But as you can see, the little pieces were like, some of them were this big, some of them were a little bit bigger, some of them were tiny, but it didn't matter because it was just such a nice mix. And we ended up having enough. I think we filled like two of these baskets. These were just, my mum put the little ribbons on them. Um, these were from Ikea, I think, these baskets for like, I don't know, three pound each. It worked a treat. So that was a great tip. Then we are nearly there. Okay, the next thing that I made was our mirror sign, which is all like wrapped up, so sorry, you can't really see. I'm gonna insert pictures, that's probably easier than me trying to unwrap this all, I'm gonna leave it wrapped. But as you can see, we just stuck some flowers on it with literally like a bit of tape around the back. The mirror, my mum found in a charity shop for seven pounds. And for like a good few months, my mum, James's mum, me, every time we went into a charity shop, we were looking at mirrors and they would like send pictures and be like, is this one good, is this one good? Either way, I'd seen these pretty pictures on Pinterest and then my mum found that one for seven pounds and I was like, yes, get it. It was the perfect size. Uh, borrowed the easels to put it on from the venue. Oh, and did they put all like the table things in here? Oh my gosh, no, I don't have an example. We just ordered off of Etsy. Let me just check how much it was. These like vinyl transfers that you can just transfer onto the mirror. It was a bit of a delicate process. I did film some of that, so I might insert it. Oh, the blue flowers for my bouquet. I also got on Etsy, they were six pounds. It was 10 pounds. 50 and i'll try and link it down below but there's loads if you just type in like mirror sign or wedding welcome sign wedding welcome transfer it will come up with loads and i think it looked great it looked really nice and i mean it's not necessary but i just liked the idea of it so that was cool and then other diy bits i did all the stationery some of which i did literally the day before the wedding do not recommend i'm just very last minute and that was a terrible idea because i got very stressed um but anyway, the stationery I'll show you in a sec. Uh, other things that we did is another thing that we got off of Etsy. I don't actually know how much this was, but I think this was under like 15 pounds, maybe even under 10 pounds. We got a cake topper for our cake. So can you see? We just got this little wooden personalized cake topper off of Etsy. And then for our cake, I think the um, the venue and my mom ended up DIYing the cake. It was just the M&S double tier cake and it was a naked cake. And then we put on some of these flowers, which are just like, again, from the range. It was just a little bunch that we snipped up with wire cutters and just pushed some of those into the cake. It was a really good cake, actually. It tasted really nice. And then we just got some cupcakes. The one thing that we forgot is we forgot to get a cake stand. We were going to buy, actually, I was gonna DIY. I've got this candlestick and and I was gonna get some plates and DIY a cake stand so that we could put the cake on the top and the cupcakes along the bottom. Literally the day before the wedding, we were like, oh shit, we never got a cake stand. And then we were just like, eh, whatever, they can just go on the edges. So we have this cake topper. I should have showed you before I put it in the bag, but it just says Sophie and James. And then these flowers were just from a bunch. I think these were from Dunelm. And I've just chopped them with some wire cutters because they were like all together with wire. And tomorrow, my mum, I've sent her some pictures of inspo, is gonna just 
shove a couple of these in the cake, put the cake topper on and that'll be good to go. Oh, geez, guys, we're nearly at the end. Also in here, the last little bits that I did was the stationery. By the way, I took this all upon myself because I was like, I'm the creative one in this marriage. James was like, if you want to do that, go ahead. He was like, I don't want to make anything creative. I think he would have rather just bought it. <laughs> but I was like, no, I'm going to do it myself. That's what I want to do. So I made all of the little place cards, bought a pack of like textured paper on Amazon. I mean, these are really like, <laughs> they're really flimsy. It could have done with some thicker paper, but you know what? They absolutely did the job. This is how they turned out printed them all out. I used a website, which I will put on the screen. You can like copy and paste everyone's names from a spreadsheet. And this did actually take quite a long time because you have to do it like table by table. And we had 12 tables. So this was actually very time consuming. But yeah, the pack of paper that I managed to do all the stationery with was maybe like 10 pounds. And then obviously the printed ink I had already. Chopped them all up folded them. These have got a little bit bent now just from being in this bag, but I also made the menus. Uh, I actually put these together on PicMonkey, I think I did them on. I use PicMonkey for all my YouTube thumbnails, so I was really familiar with it, but you could easily do this on Photoshop. Wait, or did I use the Adobe? Adobe have got like a really, really good, um, oh, what is it called? Hang on, I'm gonna have to find out because I also use that as well for some of these bits. Adobe Express, it's an app. I don't know if you have to pay for the monthly thing, but definitely have a look on the website. Yeah, Adobe Express was another really helpful app, which I think, did I do these on Adobe Express? I'm sure some stuff I did on there. This is how our menus ended up looking. I think they look really nice actually, just so that people knew what they were eating and knew what to expect because we had quite a lot of different allergies and like dietary requirements. Oh my God, what is this? <laughs> No way! Oh my god, lol, Josh, your speech notes have ended up in my hands. James is best man. <laughs> Intro, reason you're here, Cupid. Master of ceremony, to start, proud of Soph. James, teacher. <laughs> in all fairness, streaming, his chat hasn't always been great. Soph always said she'd like someone just like me. Well, that's a fucking lie. Staff, toast, parents, bridesmaids, grooms, and James and Soph. Oh, bless. That's so funny, Josh's speech notes just ended up in this bag. He did a great speech. It was actually really funny. A few things as well. We kept some of the corks. We've got like a really lovely wedding memory box that my aunt and uncle gave us as a wedding present. And so all the little bits of stationery and stuff we'll put in there. And then like in years time, we can look back on them. We also kept the corks from a bottle of champagne that I think was opened on the wedding day. And then also, oh no wait, this is, oh yeah, that was. Uh, we also did keep one of the bottles of wine and we also kept a bottle cork from the champagne from our honeymoon as well, which I mean, just, just, just silly little things, you know. Oh, I also made my thank you cards for my bridesmaids. This was Ellie's one that failed and I had to redo it because the paper was too flimsy and I ended up doing it on a different card. But yeah, I just made these cards. I think again, I put them together on um, the Adobe, um, just my thank you cards. And then for my bridesmaids, I just did some little text saying thank you as well. Also, um, we're just doing our thank you cards now and I ordered them all off of Vista print. I've got one of James's buttonholes. Do you see what I mean? This is what they had in their uh, like blazers and stuff. Some of our longest family friends and the reason that me and James are together, they got us this DIY like puzzle wedding gift. So they had this at the wedding and then we have all of these puzzle pieces that everybody has written on, like written messages on that we can put in a frame. We do actually have the frame. We just need to sort it all out. So that was a lovely like DIY kind of guest book thing. And then I think finally this just came with the, oh, I don't think I put this on social media, but just a little cute pic of me and James in the photo booth. The photo booth was one of the best things that we did. And with the photo booth, there was a book next to it. So it printed out two copies of the pictures so people could keep one and then they could stick one in the photo book. I'm sure not every single one of these got put into the guest book, but a lot of them did. Like, look, you guys will recognize these faces, I'm sure. This is me, Jazz, Sophie Foster, and Sophie Louise. Me and Emma. Oh, me and Ellie. This is just, oh, the nicest memory. Hang on, they were supposed to send us a link to all of them digitally, but I don't think we actually ever got that. So I hope this helped. If you are getting married, congratulations. And let me know if you have any questions down below. I will do my best to link everything in the description box if it's linkable. That's it, really. Good luck if you're doing your own DIY stuff. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye. She's married.